One of the most iconic characters in all of D&D lore is a drow by the name of Driss Do'Urden. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about whether or not it's possible that this iconic character could make an appearance in Baldur's Gate 3. Spoiler alert for those of you that have plans on reading the Legend of Driss book series, because I am going to talk about Driss's journey and also talk about why he's so massively influential in the Forgotten Realms setting. Thank you so much to all channel members and patrons. I really appreciate you guys. Let's jump right in. The first thing we got to talk about is fairly controversial, and that is the pronunciation of this drow's name. Is it drizzed? Is it drizzled? Is it drizzled? You know, I said it's drizzled, you know, whatever. And I, I never really answer the question. And when I do interviews, I'll use different forms of drizzled or drizzled. So all in all, it doesn't really matter how you say his name because the creator of this character, R.A. Salvatore, doesn't seem to really care himself. However, if we want to get more technical, in the third book of the Legend of Drist book series, Drist actually corrects a child who's calling him Drizit, which is the same pronunciation that I used for most of my life. So if we take Drizit out of the equation, the other two common pronunciations are the one that I'm currently using, which is pronouncing Drist like the word mist, and the other one is Dritz, pronounced like Ritz crackers. But who is Drist Do'Urden, and why is he such a notable famed character in the Forgotten Realms setting? Drist was introduced into the D&D world in 1988 by R.A. Salvatore, the author of the Legend of Drist book series. If you haven't read any of these books, I highly recommend them. Up to this point, R.A. Salvatore has written 37 books in the series. Every time I go to the bookstore, I feel like I see a new one. If that sounds intimidating, don't worry too much though, because in my opinions, books 1 through 9 or so are the most exciting and the most important books that will give you a great, easy to read introduction into the Forgotten Realms setting, which is the same setting that Baldur's Gate 3 takes place in. Speaking of video games, Drist has made several appearances in games over the years. Most importantly, he did appear in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Other games he can be found in include Menzo Baranzan, Dark Alliance 1 and 2, Demonstone, the MMO Neverwinter, Idle Champions, and the only game that he actually starred in was the recent Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance game, which in my opinion did his character an injustice. Back to Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, in Baldur's Gate 1, Drist can be found fighting off gnolls at Fisherman's Lake, which is northwest of a town called Nashgal. You can help him fight off the gnolls and then wish him a pleasant journey, or if you're feeling tough, you can try to kill him and take his gear. In Baldur's Gate 2, Drist can be found in some woods on your way back to the city of Atkatla, which is a coastal city south of Baldur's Gate. This time, Drist is with his famed adventuring party, the Companions of the Hall, and more on them later in the video. If you're reasonable with your answers, Drist and his companions will help you fight the vampire Bodhi, or of course, you can always just try to kill him. He certainly doesn't make huge appearances in the Baldur's Gate games, but it's enough to get Drist fans super excited. It's a really neat way of making players truly feel like they're in a connected and evolving Forgotten Realms setting. So it only makes sense that Drist would at least have a cameo in Baldur's Gate 3 if Larian Studios is going to keep this tradition alive. But first we have to find out if that's even possible according to the lore. So it's time for a 37 book summary of the Legend of Drist book series, and we'll see where that brings us to in present day Forgotten Realms. Drist O'Urden is a drow, also referred to as a dark elf, who decides to leave his homeland of the Underdark and live out his days on the surface world something highly uncommon for a drow to do. The drow society at large is a brutal, cruel, matriarchal society, and the most influential divine figure for the drow is the evil goddess named Lolf, aka the Queen of Spiders. Lolf was the leader of the Dark Seldarine, which is basically the pantheon of the drow, and she drives her worshippers into heavy infighting under the pretense of calling the weak. Now keep in mind that Wizards of the Coast is expanding on the drow lore, but I don't really know anything about that, nor is this the video for me to comment on that. Drist was born in the drow capital city of Menzo Baranzan in the year of 1297 DR. Baldur's Gate 3 takes place in 1492 DR, which would make Drist around 195 years of age up to this point. A drow's lifespan is similar to that of regular elves, so 700 plus years of age, but most drow do die well before that because of their extremely violent society. Drist grew up in this cruel city of Menzo Branzan, where he learned how to fight extremely well from his father named Zach Nafin, who was the weapons master for the Do'Urden house. 
The character of Drist is known to be a ranger, but in reality he's kind of a mix between several different D&D classes. Ranger, fighter, rogue, and barbarian most would likely agree on. Training with his father is where Drist started to begin his mastery of dual scimitars, which is his notable weapon choice. Unlike most other drow, Zach Nafin secretly hated the Dark Elf society. He did his best to live by his own principles, even though that was extremely hard to do in Menzo Bronzan, and often leads to a quick death. Zach Nafin obviously played a very large role in who his son Drist ended up becoming, which is ultimately a hero. Zach Nafin would ultimately sacrifice his life to save Drist, and upon discovering this, Drist left Menzo Baranzan and wandered the wilds of the Underdark for around 10 years. Eventually, he decided to test his luck on the surface world, which for a drow can actually turn out to be more dangerous than the wilds of the Underdark. Before I talk about his accomplishments on the surface world, I can't leave out his trusty panther companion named Guenevar. Guenevar is a magical black panther who resides on the astral plane, but can be summoned to the prime material plane through the use of a magical figurine. Back in Menzo Baranzan, Drist met Gwen, but Gwen belonged to a drow by the name of Mesage, and Mesage was helping train Drist in the magical arts. One day, Mesage ordered Guenevar to kill Drist, a typical day in Menzo Baranzan. But the friendship that Drist and Guenevar had formed was stronger than Mesage's magical compulsion order to Guenevar. Drist and Gwen would end up killing Mesage, and then Guenevar became Drist's trusty companion from there on out. Drist first appeared on the surface world outside of a small village called Meldabar, which was north of a city by the name of Sundabar, which in present day, according to the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, is now collapsed. To put this location into perspective for you guys, you can see the city of Baldur's Gate is right here. And then far north and a little to the west, you can see some mountainous terrain, and somewhere around here is where Drist first emerged. Drist found out quickly that Drow are not a welcome sight on the surface world, and almost everyone that he came across tried to chase him away or kill him. Drow in these areas were known to conduct surface night raids, sometimes with the sole purpose of killing and enslaving surface elves and anyone else that got in their way. Drist eventually meets a renowned human ranger by the name of Montolio, and they actually became close friends. Montolio not only taught Drist how to speak in the common tongue, but also taught him how to be a ranger of the goddess Myliki, the Forest Queen. Remember this goddess because it will be important towards the end of the video. Drist and Montolio ended up successfully defending a town from an orc raid, which is one of the many good heroic deeds that Drist will do despite knowing that the people he is defending would likely be fairly hostile towards him. Montolio ended up passing away from natural causes, and Drist was chased all the way up north of the spine of the world to the frozen arctic tundra of Icewind Dale. This is where Drist met his soon-to-be friends and adventure companions, a soon-to-be dwarven king by the name of Bruinor Battlehammer, Bruinor's adopted human daughter named Cadibri, a barbarian named Wolfgar, and a halfling named Regis. Of course, for Drist, it wasn't as simple as just walking up and meeting friends, and this is some of the best parts of the books in my opinion, but it all worked out. Drist and his companions would end up saving all of Icewind Dale from enslavement by a powerful demon named Ertu, and a mage by the name of Akar Kessel, who was in possession of a vile sentient artifact of immense power called Kranishiban. Later on, Drist and his companions would then successfully help Bruinor reclaim the lost dwarven kingdom of Mithril Hall, which was taken from the dwarves by an evil dragon named Shimmergloom. Not long after, Bruinor became king of his homeland. After all of this, Drist started to finally experience being openly accepted by many surface dwellers, but at this time it was really only in the northern parts of Faerun where his actions had immediate positive effects on the surrounding areas. After reclaiming Mithril Hall, Drist was invited to the city of Silvery Moon by none other than the human mage Lady Illustriel herself, who was one of the chosen of Mistral, the goddess of magic. Silvery Moon was the gem of the north, a city rich in culture and oftentimes used as a meeting place for all races that were morally inclined towards good. A drow being invited to Silvery Moon by the lady herself was a huge deal. Later on, Drist was kidnapped by his sister Vierna in her mad attempt to regain favor with Lolf, the Queen of Spiders. 
Drist ended up killing Vierna, and then he went to Menzo Baranzan to try and learn more of the Drow's supposed plans to take Mithril Hall from Bruinor and his dwarves. When the Drow finally attacked Mithril Hall in 1358 DR, ten years before the events in Baldur's Gate 1, Drist of course played a large role in its successful defense. After that, Drist and Cadibri would go to the City of Sails, Luskin, and there they met Captain Deudermont. They would end up spending years out at sea on the famous Sea Sprite, hunting pirate vessels and facing all manners of evil. After their pirate adventures, Drist and the Companions of the Hall would have to fight in a deadly war between orcs that were following the orc king Obald, and the dwarves who were once again having to defend the dwarven kingdom of Mithril Hall. Eventually, the orcs and dwarves would agree to sign a treaty that helped establish the borders of a new orc realm that would be called the Kingdom of Many Arrows. A treaty like this being signed, let alone even existing as a thought in the first place, was absolutely unheard of. And Dristo Erden, of course, played a major role in this happening, and the dwarves and orcs, despite still hating each other, actually saw some peace. Drist ended up marrying Cadibri. But in 1385 DR, when the Spell Plague occurred, which was a major disaster that struck the realm space, it brought with it the death of Cadibri, and eventually also the halfling Regis who tried to save Cadibri using a magical ruby. I'll leave a link below to a video I made on the Spell Plague, it's a pretty important event in the Forgotten Realms history. After many years of heartbreak, in 1409, Drist and Brunor began their 50-year search for the lost ancient dwarven kingdom of Gontelgrim, which they did end up finding just north of the city of Neverwinter. Neverwinter was once the jewel of the north, but now it has been destroyed by the Spell Plague, and was serving as a target between the war of two evil forces, that of Thay and that of Netheril. Brunor sadly ended up dying in the battle for Gontelgrim, and the companions of the Hall were no more. Drist would then join forces with his soon-to-be lover Dahlia Sinfile, an elven female who was once in the service of Saz Tam, the Lich King of Thay, and I will mention that Saz Tam is referenced in Baldur's Gate 3 underneath the apothecary shop in the Moonhaven village. Drist also teamed up with his former arch-nemesis, Artemis and Treri, as they both had a common goal in this situation, and also a drow mercenary by the name of Jarlaxle. And Treri and Jarlaxle have a lot of history with Drist up to this point, but there's not enough time in this video to get into all of that. The four of them battled the evil forces in Neverwinter and Gontelgrim, and ended up killing not only a powerful sorceress of Thay, but also a high-ranking Shadowvar tiefling by the name of Herzgo, who was leading the forces of the Netherese. Jarlaxle was thought to have died in one of these battles, and Guenevar ended up leaping through a portal, and Drist found that he could no longer summon her. After Gontelgrim and Neverwinter, Drist finds himself still with Dahlia and Entreri, which is a very morally grey group for Drist to be hanging with, but Drist actually had hopes of them both coming over to the morally good side of things. Drist, Dahlia, and Entreri would end up finding themselves in the city of Baldur's Gate, where Dahlia's son, Efron, told Drist that Guenevar was imprisoned on the Shadowfell Plain by a powerful Netherese warlock named Drago Quick. Efron would then bring them all to the Shadowfell Plain, a place of decay and death, but this trip turned out to be a trap. Entreri and Dahlia ended up petrified in Drago's home, while Drist was captured and then tortured for nearly a year. Drago would repeatedly grill Drist on his faith to Myliki, as he had an intense interest in the possible chosen of the gods. Despite Drist's beliefs, Jarlaxle didn't actually die in Neverwinter, and once Jarlaxle found out about Drist, Dahlia, and Entreri being captured by Drago in the Shadowfell Plain, Jarlaxle ended up assaulting Drago's castle with his band of mercenaries, and ultimately saving them all, including Guenevar. They would then return to the Prime Material Plain to the city of Luskin. Drist would end up leaving his current companions though and heading north to Icewind Dale. Not only was he being hunted by a deadly drow named Tiago, who wanted nothing more than to kill Drist and become a legend of Menzo Baranzan, but Drist also heard a rumor that his deceased wife and friends could possibly be found in a magical divine place called Iruladun. Rumors say Iruladun can be entered from somewhere in the Dale, and Drist of course had to go in search of evidence. 
Dahlia and Treri and a few others would go in pursuit of Driss though, and when they found him in the Dale, the group continued to help Driss search for Iruludun. One night on the eastern banks of Lac Dinesher, a powerful magic would send the entire group into a magical slumber that to them felt like a night, but it actually lasted 18 years of time on the Prime Material Plane. After awakening in the year of 1484 DR, eight years before the events in Baldur's Gate 3, Driss told Dahlia that he no longer had affection towards her. Dahlia was not too happy about what this sleep must have done to them, and she eventually attacked and mortally wounded Drist. And Treri did try to interfere and pull Dahlia off Drist in her vicious attacks, but it was too late. Drist had a head wound that would certainly lead to his death, and Dahlia and the others would then leave. Knowing that he was going to die, and with the help of Guenevar, Drist and Gwen climbed to the top of the mountain Kelvin's Cairn, which is the mountain where he first met Brunor Battlehammer. As Drist lay there dying from his wound, Cadibri, Regis, Brunor, and Wolfgar arrived. All of them were given a second chance in life and had been reincarnated by the goddess Myliki to aid Drist. Drist was in fact the chosen of the Forest Queen. Iruludun was created by Myliki herself to house and instruct Drist's dear friends prior to their reincarnations. Cadibri would then heal Drist with the grace of Myliki, and the companions of the Hall were reunited. This now brings us to the most recent books, where once again quite a lot has happened, and it's hard to summarize it all in one video. Not to mention, the information is much more scarce for these books, and I'm actually only on book number 27 myself. What we do know is that Drist and Cadibri had a daughter in 1488, so we're now only four years away from Baldur's Gate 3, and their daughter's name is Brie, or Brianelle. Drist's father, Zach Nafine, has also been resurrected, and it's suspected that the evil goddess Lolf was behind that resurrection. Believe it or not, Driss could actually be a favor of Lolf, despite his absolute defiance of her. Lolf thrives off of and gains control from chaos in the Drow society, and no Drow out there has created more chaos than Driss do Erden, who is certainly the most wanted enemy of his homeland in Menzo Branzan. In the most recent book called Starlight Enclave, Driss can be found in the Monastery of the Yellow Rose. This is a place where monks dedicate themselves to venerating the god of suffering, Ilmater. Drist himself is on a spiritual journey trying to discover the clarity and purpose of his own life, and he's also allowing his daughter to train with the monks. This monastery is actually located in the far northeast of Faerun, which means I have to switch over to a larger map that I found on Reddit from Reddit user Janovic, link below. The Monastery of the Yellow Rose can be found high up in the Earthspur Mountains in the Kingdom of Damara. Drist's daughter, I believe, was of the toddler age on their journey to the monastery, and taking into account that she was born in 1488, this would bring us really close to the time of Baldur's Gate 3. So after all of that, the answer to the original question is yes, Dristo Erden could absolutely make an appearance in Baldur's Gate 3, and so could many of his companions that I briefly mentioned in the summary of his life. Most, if not all, are very much alive, and if you guys want me to do a video more focused on those characters, let me know below. In the latest book, Drist is far, far away from the city of Baldur's Gate, but we don't really know the exact time difference from the latest R.A. Salvatore book to the events being created by Larian Studios in Baldur's Gate 3. Depending on how the magical slumber in Iruludun affects aging, Drist could actually be around 177 years of age instead of 195. Some of Drist's companions, such as Cadibri and Wolfgar, would now be unbelievably old, literally. But since they died and then were reincarnated by Myliki, things absolutely change here. The mysterious events that are occurring in Baldur's Gate 3 with the Dead 3, the Absolute, and the Mind Flayers are events that all of these characters would likely become well aware of very soon if they don't already know. Personally, I would love to see Drist, of course, as it's a tradition in the Baldur's Gate games, but I think I would be even more excited to see some other companions such as Jarlaxle, who in my opinion is one of the most interesting characters in all Forgotten Realms lore. 
Jarlaxle, along with Cadibri, Wolfgar, Bruinor, and Regis, all make appearances in the original Baldur's Gate games. And considering that they're still alive, who knows what Larian and Wizards of the Coast have up their sleeve. So which characters would you like to see make an appearance in Baldur's Gate 3? Let us know below in the comments. If you'd like to join the community Discord server, there's a link to that below in the video description. And also, if you have plans on buying any games in the near future, feel free to use my affiliate link to the GOG store in the video description as well, which does end up helping support the channel. Catch you guys on the next one.